First Assembly is pleased to present the lineup for the 2023 Winter Concert Series to the Southwest Florida community. We sincerely hope that each concert will be a special blessing to you. The concert series begins on January 8th with greater vision. This is one of the most popular Southern gospel groups. We look forward to their concert at First Assembly. On January 15th, we will feature Reggie and Lady Love Smith in concert. This talented couple is featured at many of the Bill Gaither Vocal Band concerts, since Reggie is one of the most distinguished members of the vocal band. On January 22nd, we welcome the Easters to the concert series. This will be the first time that Jeff and Sherry have appeared here in concert. We are honored to have them with us this year. No concert series would be complete without a concert by Grammy Award winners, the Isaacs. This amazing family has appeared here several times and their rich vocal blend and musicianship make them one of our favorites. Don't miss this concert on January 29th. Another favorite of the concert series is the Booth Brothers, who will be in concert on February 5th. We expect a full house that night as this exciting group is one of our most requested. There will be no concert on Sunday evening, February 12th, due to the Super Bowl. We hope your team wins. On Sunday, February 19th, we welcome Danny Murray and the Voices of Lee back to the Winter Concert Series. This widely acclaimed group has received national recognition for their amazing vocal artistry. A special concert that is actually not a part of the Winter Concert Series will feature the Collingsworth family here at First Assembly. This fabulous group is possibly the most popular group in Southern Gospel music today. This is a ticketed concert, and you may purchase them at www.thecollingsworthfamily.com. The final concert of the Winter Series will feature none other than Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. Ernie and the group bring the series to a close with their amazing harmony and high energy presentation. We always look forward to their ministry here at First Assembly. Remember that all concerts begin at 7 p.m. The doors will open for those with reserved tickets at 6 p.m. We encourage everyone who does not have a reserved ticket to come anyway as open seating begins at 6.45. Seats are always available for the concerts. Due to new restrictions this year, no concert will be streamed on our website or on Facebook or YouTube. We hope you enjoy the 2023 Winter Concert Series. Now it is time for the much anticipated 32nd Annual Christmas Keyboard Festival.
Absolutely fantastic. Wasn't that awesome? It was amazing. Woo! I said last night, if that's all we heard, it was worth coming. <laughs> that was the whole gospel story in one song. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we want to welcome you to our 32nd annual Keyboard Festival here at First Assembly. And if you're a guest here this morning, uh, my name is Russ Hurst, and this is my wife, Carrie, and we're the pastors here at First Assembly. Well, you know, this weekend actually marks an incredible tradition that, as you can tell by now, has been going on for 32 years, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. But for many of us, this is kind of like the kickoff for the Christmas season, where we get to celebrate it um, in such a special and a meaningful way. And I know that that would not be possible without many of you that are sitting here, maybe many of you that are watching online as well, that you come year after year, and we're so grateful that you're here. Yeah, we want to thank you for that, because if it wasn't for you wanting to come, we wouldn't be able to do this again and again. We want to do, yeah, give yourselves yes. a hand, absolutely. <laughs> I want to do something that I did last year just for fun, but uh, it actually is very enlightening. Uh, how many of you are here for the very first time? This is your first Christmas keyboard festival. So Raise up your hands. hands. You got the good all seats, right. our neighbors Woo! right here, our friends. <laughs> awesome. Good to see all of you up in the balconies as well. All right, how many of you have been coming for at least five years? Raise your hands up high. Wow, wow. the vast majority. Keep That's them up. Awesome. 10 years. Wow. Almost the same number, 15 years. <laughs> oh, 20 years. We got a competition. <laughs> how come you weren't here 15 years, but you're here 20 years? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, 25 years. There we go. 30 That's years. Awesome. Awesome, yes. <laughs> 35 years, just kidding, we haven't had it that many times. <laughs> wow, you guys deserve an extra prize. Uh, we'll yes. give you a sugar cookie or something afterwards. Yes. Um, but also something fun, how many of you are snowbirds and you're back right now and you escaped the winters in the north? Good to have all of you here. Welcome back. Any Canadian geese amongst us today? Any Canadians? We had in the other services. That's right, if you're Canadian geese, honk so we can oh hear goodness. you. There we go. I told him she not didn't to want do me to do that, yesterday. but I, I, I so desperately <laughs> wanted to do that. <laughs> well, well, no, seriously, we're really thankful. Um, if this is your first time with us, um, we'd love to just have a record of your visit. In the seat pocket in front of you, you'll find a little Connect card. If you could do us a favor, just fill that out. Um, you can toss it in the offering um, when that time comes around, or feel free and visit our website at famfm.com. We have lots of things happening. This is just kind of the kickoff for the Christmas season. We have a lot going on for the month of December. Next Sunday, we're doing a special family service in both of our services at 9 and 11 a.m. And then on Christmas Eve, we're going to do our annual Christmas candlelight yes. service. But we'll have two services at 3 and 5. And then on Christmas Day, which is the very next day, it is on a Sunday, um, we have just one service, but it'll be a special service at 11 a.m. So you don't want to miss it. And we We'd love to have you visit with us. That's right. But before we go on even to one more song, we just want to ask that you just join us in a prayer. And let's just welcome our Heavenly Father just to be here in a special way. Uh, because without Him and without His gift, we would not be here. Let's just thank Him. Heavenly Father, uh, we even thank you for this moment. We thank you for Christmas. You were the one that gave the first Christmas gift. You gave us the best. You gave us your Son, Jesus. And for that, we're eternally grateful. Father, we just invite you to be in the very center of everything that's going on, that you and your son would be magnified, that you would be glorified, that you would be praised, and that, God, we would be able to experience your love and experience you in a fresh new way, that every person that is here would leave here changed, including myself. And we thank you, God, for your amazing love. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. The tricky clock tick-tocking, each painfully long minute unlocking. The tumbly, jumbly, can't close your eyes feeling. What will it be? When will it be? Oh, the anticipation, the watching, the wishing and waiting to let the wiggles and giggles and goosebumps go. To find, to see, to finally know. What will it be? When will it be? Oh, the expectation, the what-ifs, the oh-mys fairly shaking, longing for this night's joy all year, that moment of hope so very near. Oh, but would they, could they, imagine a gift so great, a gift that compelled the whole world to wait? When a heavenly Father gave all mankind his Son, the One, Love defined. The magic of Christmas is more brilliant, you see, than a bag or a box tucked under a tree. The true love of Christmas really began when holy God became holy man. Joseph, it's time. He's here.
Amen, choir. That it was wonderful. Praise God. Emmanuel is here. He is with us. That's kind of our theme throughout this uh, 32nd keyboard, Christmas keyboard festival. Can you believe it? I was standing up here 32 years ago doing the same thing. You know what, I, I really want us to start the Christmas season off happy and well and all of those good things. And I want you to do me a favor this morning. I want you to stand. I want you to turn around and greet about five or six people and wish them a Merry Christmas. And you can be seated. I guess you've noticed that this year I have a red sweater. I um, went to the store and um, I knew I had to find one that would cover a multitude of sins from what I had eaten at Thanksgiving and what I had eaten on my birthday and what I had eaten at Easter and what I had eaten at New Year's and what I had eaten last Christmas. So uh, this is what I ended up with. So I brought it home and I put it on and I told my wife that I looked like a poinsettia on steroids. <laughs> there are a lot of things that have changed in the keyboard festival over the years, but some things remain constant. And one of the things that remains constant is the fact we always have four grand pianos. And uh, <laughs> thank you. We've had all different combinations of pianos. Some years we'd have two brown ones and two black ones. We would have, and like this year, we have all four uh, black grand pianos. And uh, it's always been an interesting item. One year, it was, it was kind of a crazy situation. Would you believe one year we had a gold piano up here? That's a fact. We did have a gold piano up here. Some of you that are my age will remember a gentleman named Roger Williams who toured all over the United States playing his piano, which was a gold Steinway. And he was local, and they called us and said, would you like to use that piano for your festival? I said, sure. Sure, you know, not everybody gets to play a gold piano. Now, it was not solid gold, or we would have had to station um, security guards around it the whole time, but it what part of it was gold, and the whole outside of it was gold, and it was his piano. So that was kind of a unique uh, piano that we had one year. These people that are behind me that are about to perform for you are very gifted musicians, and we are blessed to know them. We're blessed to have them at the Keyboard Festival this year. Would you please make them welcome?
Guys, I think that piece gets faster every time you play it. I have the privilege of introducing these people very quickly to you today. Over here on the far piano is Chris Jones. Chris, Chris has played in several of the uh, keyboard festivals. I told everybody last year that she and her family were moving away. They didn't, but this year they are. They're moving to Northern California at the end of this month. We're going to miss you, and you have been a blessing, lady. We appreciate you. <laughs> Next, and certainly not least, is a man named Ian Denson. Now, this is a good Ian. This is a real good Ian because this keyboard festival would not have gotten off the ground if it was not for this guy. And... We started, we started talking about it months and months ago, and he had some great ideas, and uh, thank you, Ian. You are incredible. We appreciate you very much. <laughs> at the far piano over here is Lisa Van Zanten. Lisa has played longer here at the Keyboard Festival than any of the other pianists. Thank you, Lisa. We appreciate it. This young man is Ethan Mulvihill. You've seen him grow up around First Assembly. And he's going to be playing for you in a few minutes and doing a piano solo of his own that's spectacular. I want to invite uh, Janice Zarek to join me on the platform. Janice is one of those ladies that a church, every church needs because this lady is gifted in so many areas. And right now, uh, tell us what you do. Well, I am privileged to work at the youth department here at First Assembly of God. I've done this for many years, and it's my heart, and I love it. And I want you to tell about the Fine Arts Festival. My wife and I went to Orlando last August, spent a week supporting our kids and following them around to all of these uh, competitions. And uh, tell us about that competition. Well, Fine Arts Festival is just a great opportunity for us to help students to discover, develop, and then deploy the talents that God has given them. And so every year we take a group of our young people, uh, we work with them for months in advance, get them ready. We go to a competition, uh, which is our district competition, which is all the churches from all over Florida. And then most of the time, most of them advance, and we get to go to the national level uh, where it's churches from all over the United States. And it's so incredible to see young people coming together to just uh, share their gifts that God has given them. And I've said it the last two programs. I'm going to keep saying it. The media wants you to believe that there's no hope for this next generation. But I'm here to tell you they're amazing. They're gifted. They love Jesus. And they are going to do great things for us. Okay. Now tell, tell us about this group behind you. So Fine Arts Festival, you have all different categories from vocals, instrumentals, writing, dance, uh, anything you can think of, photography. One of the categories is also called unconventional percussion. So if you can beat on it, it qualifies. And we have seen all kinds of different uh, creative ways of doing this. These guys did uh, great this year. And so they have put together... Um, as you can see, garbage cans. <laughs> yeah, and I, I thought if any of you lost your garbage can during the hurricane, you may want to look closely up here and Maybe. see if we have it. Yeah, we'll, we'll return it. But anyhow, so it's just a fun category, but uh, again, it just allows these students to be creative. Uh, this particular group is coached by Daniel Betzer, who you've heard up here on the drums throughout uh, this program, and he's just done great. Keep investing in our young people as he has, and you're going to see them do great things. Guys, take it away.
Ethan was also a part of the Fine Arts Festival competition. And um, I just, you may want to clap more in a minute when you find out that he was the number one in the nation in the piano division. And furthermore, he not only did it this year, but he was also first in the nation last year. And he's going to be uh, performing Jesus Never Fails, Ethan.
That's Ethan Motherhill. Wow. I wish I could still play like that. <laughs> um, I'm really in a quandary about this next group. Um, wow. F a crazy thing happened. Um, they claim to be a Southern Gospel quartet. And their bus uh, just fell apart over here on Colonial Boulevard. And they came over here and said, we hear you're having a concert and we want to sing. And I said, well, that's wonderful. I'm not so sure you're going to be able to do that. And um, so I'm really, I, don't, I don't know whether to have them or not, but uh, what do you guys think? Do you think I should go ahead and let them sing? Okay. Would you please welcome the quartet? Just 
Wasn't that fantastic? I didn't know that this was actually going to be a part of the keyboard festival, and I'd been sick, and I came Thursday night to the first practice, and when I saw them do that, I was laughing so hard and coughing so hard, I stripped my voice, and this today, I'm just finally getting it back. Give it up one more time for those guys. That was incredible. And thank their parents as well for letting them do that. Um, we're just going to take this opportunity to receive the Lord's 10% in our offerings. And uh, this is also a time, uh, if you can, to give a little extra uh, to help us pay for the keyboard festival. As you can imagine, there's a lot of costs and expenses that go with it. And uh, we want to be able to keep doing this every single year. So we do thank you uh, for your generosity. But at the same time, those tithes and offerings is what continues the ministries and helps us uh, support all the missionaries that we support and all the things that we do. And I just want to thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart for your faithfulness. Uh, it's been a tough year, and you guys have been faithful. Let's just push through to the end. Amen? Amen. Let's just pray over these offerings as the ushers come forward. And let's once again thank our Heavenly Father because everything we have is from Him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. Even that song that was just played on the piano by Ethan, Lord, you have always been faithful, Lord. It has been a tough year, but God, you've been there for us, Lord. So many miracles, so many testimonies, God. And we just pray that you would continue to bless the giver and the gift and that you'd meet every single need that is represented in this house, touch every body, heal every sickness, and uh, just continue to strengthen your people and your children, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen. Also, uh, if you do have a Connect card, this is the time that you could put that in with the offering. We look forward to connecting with you. God bless you. church family we are so glad you're here you don't want to miss our next family christmas service happening next weekend so bring your friends your family and the kids to be a part of this powerful student-led service we are so looking forward to seeing you there If you have any questions or need more information, you can visit our website at famfm.com, download the app, or visit one of the information centers in the lobby. We can't wait to connect with you. God bless you.
was that silent night when the stars turned their gaze to marvel at the earth. When the heavens gathered breathless round a lowly stable. When a young mother wept tears of worship, falling on the baby in her arms. And the song of the earth arose in Bethlehem, soft as the tender beating of his heart. And all was calm, all was bright. Yet could this be the same God of Abraham, the conqueror of Israel, this baby? This fragile life. Is this child the one who burned his name in rapture across the gasping skies? Whose voice spoke the oceans into crashing rhythms? Who crafted the mountains into guardians of the firmament? Whose hand ignited the thirst of the deserts and the warring surge of the elemental hosts? Who breathed life from dust? Broke the oppressor's rule? scattered the chains of his people like sand and led them through the wilderness with the pillar of flame is this child the one whose presence billowed thunderous on sinai's peak who surrounded job with the roaring wind stood defiant in the raging furnace wrote judgment against tyrants and blazed on the lips of the prophets scorching history's pages with the fury of his might this be the same God who chose to come as the vulnerable king, setting his throne on straw and manger, drawing forth the tears of shepherds, receiving the gifts of wandering travelers, his fame unknown in this world. He is Jesus, the one who thunders through the heavens yet whispers to our hearts, who reigns victorious, yet bows to serve the broken. He is God in the fury, God in the silence. He holds this mystery balanced in his hands, holds our questions till they lose their need, until all we see is him. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. And the soul felt its worth, a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn for Oh. 
chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let such a privilege and an honor to be here with you this morning at Keyboard Festival. I almost said tonight. We did two last night. Uh, my name is Micah Solomon, and I'm the new executive creative pastor here at First Assembly. Yeah. I'm absolutely loving it here in Florida in December. It is very, very different than what I'm accustomed to around Christmas time. Um, but 80 degrees is amazing for me. Amen. All those that are here, all those snowbirds, that was a new thing for me. Everybody kept talking about snowbirds. I literally thought it was a bird for a while. And then uh, you guys showed up. And I thought, oh, it's people. All right, great. Um, but I love it down here. Love it down here. But if you've ever been up north uh, around Christmas time, has anyone ever been up north when it was snow and in deep white snow? Oh, it's beautiful. We go up north every year to Kansas City, Kansas, to where my, my wife's family uh, is, and uh, we pray for snow every year. Most years we don't get it, some years we do. We've typically lived in the south our entire life, but nothing is like Christmas time when it snows. And we've got a song that I'd love to do for you today. My wife's going to join me, Jessica Solomon, and we're going to sing a song called Winter Snow.
My favorite singer. From my first Merry Christmas of the season With every card I address and sing There's a longing that starts And it's pulling my heart Home for Christmas again Give me candlelight service and the carols. Read me the stories of Bethlehem. And the snow is a plus. I don't care if I'm just home for Christmas again. Let there be mistletoe. And lights all aglow the way I recall. You'll leave cookies out for Santa Claus, and I'll eat them all. Then let's hold hands. And we'll thank the Lord together For all of our family and all our friends And be thankful that He has allowed us to be Home for Christmas again Come true, 
next year I'll be with you home for Christmas again. so much. Well, I have four incredible kids, and nothing uh, is like Christmas when you're around family and friends, and uh, I wish they could be here with us tonight. Typically, we do Christmas concerts, and I'll have the kids come up, and it's my favorite part of the show, and I've got two that have just went to college this semester, and life is changing uh, for my wife and I, uh, but we'll get to see them soon. But tonight, I do have my daughter with us, and my wife and my daughter are going to come out and sing one of our Christmas favorite hymns. Would you give a warm welcome to them as they come? Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light From now on Our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide Yeah. Well, a little more about me. I've been a worship leader for 22 years, and although Christmas is definitely my favorite time of the year, and there's so many fun songs to sing, when I begin to think about what God did for me in my life and how it all started when he came to earth uh, to be with us and to guide us and lead us and uh, to take our sins and to give us new hope Wow, what a time of year. If there's ever a time of year to reflect on what all God has done for us, it is now. Amen. Is anyone in the room can say, where would I be without Jesus? Amen. Amen. I love worshiping, whether it's Easter, Christmas. We've done some fun songs tonight, but I wonder if tonight you would open up your hearts and you would lift your hands with us and begin to worship the Lord on this last song. It's called Emmanuel, as we reflect on all that God has done for us. Would you do that with us tonight? All right, let's worship.
save us one and all Go and find this child They call Emmanuel 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 God is with us Absolutely powerful. I'd never heard that song. Uh, it's one of my favorite new worship songs and honestly Christmas hymns. 
I hope you've been noticing that there's a theme that all these songs and all these themes, Pastor Dave Thomas mentioned it, that was that song, it's the name Emmanuel and all that it means. Everything we've sung, everything that we've worshipped was the culmination of a promise. Hundreds and hundreds of years before Christ was born, God gave a word to the prophet Isaiah and it came into being. And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 22, it says this, that that first Christmas, that all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Did you just say Emmanuel? Emmanuel. One more time. Emmanuel. One of the simplest yet profound names ever to be spoken or given. And I just encourage you right now, let's just pause. Do we pause to think of the fullness of what that name means for us, not only individually, but literally for all of humanity? Have you ever thought what would your life be? What would life be like if Jesus never came, if Emmanuel never came to be with us? What if Christmas never happened? Reminds me of one of my favorite Christmas movies, It's a Wonderful Life. Anybody ever seen It's a Wonderful Life? Absolute classic. But it's a similar theme. It's a Wonderful Life is a question of what if. When George was going through a crisis of life, God in his grace gives this wingless angel Clarence, brings him into George's life, and he gives George his wish to see what his life would be like if he no longer lived, if he what never was alive to begin with. And George gets to observe and he gets to see first and foremost his home that was beautiful was actually now in shambles. His wife that he loved was a single librarian. She never met the love of her life. She was all alone. His kids no longer existed. His mother was a maid and she was just eking out an existence, struggling and just surviving. All the people that he had helped, all the people that he encouraged, all the people that he brought hope to, nobody else did and they were still stuck in their struggles. It's actually very depressing in that part of the movie. But thankfully, that wasn't his reality. And Clarence brought him back to the reality that he was alive, that his life of love, his life of giving, his life of encouragement did make a difference. We see this great restoration of George with his family at the very end. And the only thing that changed was his perspective. His perspective. So I want to ask you again, what if Jesus, also known as Emmanuel, never came to be with you, to be with me? He who operates outside of space and time could have stayed there. We would not know God. You would not know God. You would not know of God. Your creator would be unknown and unknowable. It's totally up to his choosing because God could hide in a place that we would never find him. Think about this, if you didn't know God at all, would you be married to the person that you're married to? I know I wouldn't, my parents met in Bible school, poof, I'm gone. If Christ didn't come, then there is no Christmas. If Christ didn't come, there is no church, poof, this place doesn't exist. There is no Christmas and December is just another month. Think about this. The prayers that you've prayed that have been answered, none of them would have been answered. The time that you needed healing and medicine wasn't cutting it and God show up, that didn't happen. The time that you needed finances and God restored your finances. Or more importantly, those of us that know him, you never would have experienced his forgiveness. You never would have experienced his grace. You never would have heard his word. You never would have experienced his love. Are you guys catching this? That word Emmanuel means so, so much, but it's like the song that was sung, that's not our reality, and that's not today, and that's not now. That song said this, in the dark of night, no hope to be found, but bursting forth a light with a heavenly sound of the news of the one to come to save us one and all, go and find this child they call Emmanuel. 
It's awesome. Max Lucado wrote a book on this very topic, and I love the way that he titled it, God Drew Near. He's not just God with us. He is God near us. Can you just say, God near me? That's what it is. Say, God near me. God is near you. And that first Christmas, the way he approached and showed himself to every one of us, he didn't come in his power and his majesty. I don't know about you, but that video with the manger and God's creation and his power. But he didn't come in the grandeur. He didn't come in that power and authority. He came in humility. He came in the form of a baby. He came to where we could approach him. And he welcomed everyone near and far. The story of Christmas. He welcomed the irreligious and he welcomed the religious. He welcomed those at the top of the socioeconomic scale. He welcomed those at the bottom. It's the story of the shepherd and the wise men. And he did it to say to you, no matter how you feel about yourself, no matter what you think, he wants you to know him. And he's near to you. My question to you today, what is your response? What is your response to these truths? What is your response to his presence? What is your response to his love? He says, those that draw near to him, he will draw near to them. There is a closer intimacy that you can have with your creator and your heavenly father, and it is purely your choice. What's your response? He wants to call you closer. He wants to call you higher. There's a scripture God gave me that's kind of been a theme for our church this whole year. It's Psalm 91. I'm going to read it. Whoever, who's whoever? That's you. That's you online. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And you can be like the psalmist who says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. It's been a tough year. Things aren't easy. But you serve an all-powerful God who is God most high, who also is your heavenly Father. And he invites you to come where he is, and he wants you just to be in the shadow of his wing. That's the description that is there. Would you just close your eyes right now? God is near to you. Would you draw near to him? Whatever it is, whatever the barrier is, whatever the question is, he welcomes you, he welcomes it. Would you just let him minister to you in this moment? And maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus. You don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. I want to give you that chance right now. All you have to do is just welcome him. He's there. But God's word says that he stands at your heart door and he knocks. And if anyone opens that door, he will come in and he will have supper with them. He will have life with them. And if that's you and you have that desire, would you just open your heart right now and just say, Jesus, I welcome you into my home. I ask you to forgive me of my mistakes. I receive the work that you did on the cross. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again to pay the penalty to free me from my mistakes. Cleanse me. Fill me with your love. I give you my life today. And I want your life in return. I want all of you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Today I love you back. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, a simple prayer of just invitation, it's done. And that sense that you're feeling, that warmth that you're feeling is his love, it's his presence. And just encourage you to continue that relationship. We would like to be there for you in whatever way we can to pray with you. If you need a Bible, we would like to give you a Bible. Whatever, just make that known to us. We'd be happy uh, to be there for you. Can we just welcome those that might have prayed that prayer right now? Into the family of God. I want to say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen? We have a tradition here. It's a great tradition that the last song of every single Christmas keyboard festival is the Hallelujah Chorus. 
So those of you who've been here, those that were showing off, you've been here 30 years, you know the drill. We're going to ask everybody to stand right now. I'm going to ask that you take that uh, time that you've been having with the Lord and that you would just listen to this. The word hallelujah just simply means praise the Lord and that you would praise him and that you would magnify him and let him continue to touch your heart. And there will be a closing prayer blessing at the very end. God bless you. I'd like to just give a special thanks to Pastor Dave Thomas, yes. Pastor Micah Solomon, Ian Denson, Charles Kreider for their leadership of this team. I want to thank the choir, thank the pianist, thank the band, the horns, the tech team, so many complicated elements. Can we just give them a royal thank you and appreciation? Absolutely fantastic. 
We want to thank you so much for coming and making this possible year after year. Uh, before you leave, we have also a tradition in every Sunday morning at the end of our services, we do a closing prayer blessing. I'm going to ask Pastor Kerry to do that and just encourage you to enjoy each other's company and celebrate Christmas together as you leave. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your presence here today. We're reminded once again that you're with us, that you never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for the promise that we have in you. And God, I just thank you for every single person that's here, every single person that's watching. And Lord Jesus, I ask that you would bless them. God, would you bless them with everything that you have and everything that you are, Lord God. God, I pray that your face would shine upon them. And God, that everything that they do, God, would bring glory to you. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody Merry said, Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you. God bless you online. God bless you.